Uh, afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming uh, today. As you know, today is a day that supporting nominations for the Labour leadership uh, close, and I wanted to take the opportunity to set out how I see the progress of my campaign and where I see it going over the coming weeks. I, I am delighted to have been nominated by around 150 constituency Labour parties to add to support from over 60 MPs and a number of major trade unions. I believe that my campaign is picking up support because it is the one that recognises the scale of change that we need in order to win. Change in our policy direction, change in the labour movement and change in the way we do politics. And today I want to briefly set out why I think that change is essential for our party and for the country. First thing to say is this, which is I'm not the candidate for the easy life. One more heave with some of the dogmas, some of the new Labour dogmas of the past. If you want that, I am not your man. In the course of this campaign, I have become more convinced about the need for change in approach that I have been talking about. Labour lost one million voters between 2005 and 2010, and we need them back. We need to recognise above all that we lost votes because people lost a sense of who we were and what we stand up for. So first, we need a change in policy direction. My campaign is rooted in values of equality, the dignity of work, fairness, aspiration, and a foreign policy based on values, not simply alliances. I'm going to say something more about that in a moment. I believe Labour is at its best when its values and principles are clear. Not because it's comfortable to say that for our party, but because it's the way to win. And I believe there is a new majority we can bring together to support us in this country on the basis of a clear direction for Labour. Progressive in its belief in a fair economic policy, liberal in its defence of basic freedoms, and strong in demanding rights and responsibilities throughout society, including at the top. But to capture that support, continuity is not the answer. We must change to win. Changing means being willing to recognise what we did right and what we did wrong as a government. It's not about dumping on our record. It's about listening to the people. I'm proud we created millions of extra jobs and began the process of welfare reform. But too many of those jobs were low paid and too many people were stuck in low paid work. That's why I'm arguing this campaign for a much more active industrial policy, to create good jobs at decent wages and to get more people into work. I'm proud we saw more people going to university, but tuition fees were seen as a barrier to aspiration and middle class living standards, and that's why I'm for a graduate tax. I'm proud about what we did to cut crime with CCTV and DNA, but I do believe we got the balance wrong between the power of the state and individual liberty on stop and search and ID cards, and we lost votes as a result. This party would reclaim individual liberty as its own under my leadership. I'm proud we tackled child poverty, but higher inequality than at any time since the 1950s is bad not just for the poor, but for all of us in its effects on our society. And we do need a debate in this country about top pay, which is why I'm for a high pay commission. I'm proud also of our foreign policy on Kosovo, Sierra Leone, and I support the mission in Afghanistan. But I do believe we lost trust over Iraq, over Iraq, and we need to draw a line under it. We don't just need change in our policy, but we need change in our party too. We need to change as a party by looking outwards and recruiting new people to our cause. And we have recruited 20, 25,000 members since the general election. But our party must become the best community organisation in Britain, campaigning not simply for ourselves, but to make change happen in local areas. That's why I've launched my campaign for a living wage, as something Labour must campaign to make happen up and down this country. But we also need to understand how the wider Labour movement needs to change. I am proud that thousands of trade union members, consulted by their representatives, have backed me in this leadership campaign. We need to be the party that stands up for the needs and interests of working people. Modern trade unions, in my view, are an essential part of a fair society. Now, some people will raise the support I've received from the trade unions, so let me say this. I believe the link between Labour and the four million people who choose to be linked to us through the unions is an essential connection between politics and working people. A connection that is actually more necessary in the times we live in when politics can often seem disconnected from people's lives. My experience of this link is working on vital issues that should matter to all of us, for example, with the Construction Workers Union UCAT on the issues of deaths on building sites. But there is also a big challenge for the Labour movement, which I want to say something about, and that is relevance. 
Only 15% of people in the private sector workforce are in trade unions. I think we need more people in trade unions to get that kind of representation. We need trade unions that can rise to the challenge, though, of persuading people that they can make a positive difference to their lives. Because they will never provide the representation necessary in British society unless they reach out and recruit. So our movement has to change. Thirdly, we need to change the way we do politics. We've become used in this country to a very presidential style of politics, to people boasting of how tough and how strong they are. I do have the toughness of conviction. I have the strength of values. But I'm also someone who listens. And I think that is a very important trait. Listens to members of the public, to members of our party, to the team I would assemble around me. This is, in my view, what real strength involves and is the kind of leadership Labour needs if it is to reconnect. I will also offer strong opposition but avoid easy opportunity. I will take on the government hard on where I think they are wrong, as in their plans on the deficit. But where I agree with them, and I've already indicated I agree with some of what they're saying about civil liberties, I'm prepared to work with them in the national interest. So I offer change in the nature of leadership, change in our movement, and change in our policy as well. I am absolutely convinced, and I believe many people around the country are, that Labour needs to change to win. And I believe I'm the change that Labour needs. It's about real change, not more of the same. It's about a politics based on values, not positioning. And it is about a party that can inspire new people to join us and reach out to the country. And that's why I'm standing uh, in this leadership election. And now I'll be very happy to take uh, questions. Who would like to start? Yeah. Uh, Mary Dell from the Daily Telegraph. Um, as you mentioned crime, but not punishment, you were at North Down Prison last week, I think. And I wondered, first of all, what you made of it, and also whether you'd accept that Labour made great mistakes, not only as far as civil, li civil liberties are concerned, but also on criminal justice policy in general. Well, Mary, uh, Mary Dell, Daily Telegraph. Uh, uh, interesting, for those who don't know you. Um, I, um, I think that, that Ken Clark is right to open up the debate on uh, uh, community sentencing uh, and short-term prison sentences. I, actually, you're right. I, will, I did visit uh, the prison that you referred to. And talking to some of the people there, they rightly pointed out that people on short sentences um, will often re-offend and are more likely to re-offend than people on community punishments. And, and this is sort of part of the leadership that I will offer that when the government does something which I think is heading us in a direction which is right, I will say so. Now, I think the critique of Ken Clark is, is he willing to carry through on putting the investment that is required in community punishment? I fear not. I fear that actually what he's doing is a sort of an alibi, if you like, for the kind of cuts he wants to do. But I think what is important, if I'm the leader of the Labour Party, my challenge to the government on that will be to carry through on the agenda that he is starting to set out. <coughs> yeah. Bob. Bob Roberts from the Mirror. Can I carry on with civil liberties? If you believe in civil liberties, do you believe that CCTV needs further regulation or restrictions on its use? Do you believe the DNA register needs restrictions on how long, how long records can be held? I think my overall view, Bob, on, on, on uh, CTTV and DNA is that actually I think they were two things that we did broadly right, that were broadly right. Mm -hmm. I think it's other things that we did that I was more, that I'm more concerned about. And um, for example, I agree with what the government is now saying about ID cards, but I don't think we proved the case uh, for ID cards. And I think any extension of state power, you need to prove the case for it. I do worry uh, about Section 44 of the Terrorism Act, and I think it's right to review some of the implications of that because it has been applied in a very broad fashion uh, rather than in the narrow fashion for which it was originally intended. And I think actually the truth is that we are stronger at defending the measures that are right when we're not engaging in measures that people think are excessive and overbearing. Jen. Um, if you were in power now, how quickly would you cut the deficit? And what would you cut? Would you cut, focus more on cuts or would you focus more on tax rises? What would be your proportion, your ratio? Well, we're not in government, but let me give you, uh, let me answer the to question directly. I, I think Alistair Darling's plan at the election, the plan that we fought at the election on, is the right starting point for where we need to go. But I think it's right when you go into opposition, and certainly if I become leader of the opposition, 
that you look at the way circumstances have changed because actually the deficit numbers have been improving since that plan uh, and what the right balance between tax and spending is. What I can definitely say to you, James, is that I think the coalition's balance is the wrong balance, 80% spending cuts, 20% tax rises, uh, and I think we will, uh, I think we need to look at what the right balance is. What I also say to you is that if I'm the leader of the opposition, along with my shadow chancellor, by the time of October the 20th, which is the date, I believe, of the uh, spending review, we will set out very clearly the kind of direction and pace of deficit reduction uh, that we think uh, is necessary. On the question about what would what would we cut, we set out a number of areas that we would make where, where we would make reductions in at the time before the election. Not just efficiencies, but some programs like legal aid and regeneration, uh, some changes in public sector pay uh, and pensions. If we were in government, we'd be having a comprehensive spending review and looking at all of the information. Uh, but we're not in government uh, at the moment. Yeah. Simon Mayor's ITV Regions, you said you were grateful for the votes of the trade unionists. I wonder whether I could get your comments on the only um, primary that's been held by Labour Party so far, the, the Bassett Law primary, where thousands of Labour voters and Labour members in Bassett Law voted. Um, they gave your brother 50.3% and yourself second in 20.2%. Can you get a comment on that? I think you win some, you lose some. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, I think the turnout in Bassett Law was about a third among Labour voters. In the end, as David said today on, on an interview he was doing, nobody's really voted in this election yet. And the votes that matter start on September the 1st. I'm very pleased with the support I'm picking up. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens in the actual election when the actual votes are cast. Roland. Um, a couple of points, if I may. Um, firstly, for a, for a party member or a member just waking up to the contest, um, who wants to know um, who the union's candidate is. That's, that's you, right? I, I, I've got support <coughs> from the trade unions, Roland. But if, I, I, I mean, the way you put it, it makes it sound sort of pejorative somehow. I mean, I'm a candidate, I'm, I'm a candidate who is my own man. And the truth is that I've picked up support from union members who have said to their trade union executives, this is the person we want you to vote for. And the reason they've said that is because they think I'm the best person to reconnect with working people. And there are millions of people who are trade unionists up and down this country. And so I'm proud to have got that support, yes. Um, and secondly, um, you said you, 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 it's time to move on from, from some new Labour dogs. Yeah. Um, now, you, you've talked about some, some policies yeah. um, of the last government that you, you move away from. But what are the new Labour documents that you're I think that the problem about New Labour was that it did exactly what it accused Old Labour of, which is it got stuck in its own orthodoxies. So if you take what happened on the banks, actually what happened was that we ended up behind the public. We ended up looking like the people defending bankers' bonuses when the public was saying to us, hang on, this is an outrage. We ended up looking like the people who weren't saying, let's reimagine a different future for the banks and let's make sure they properly lend to small businesses. We were saying, well, look, it's hands off. It's really a matter for the, uh, for the banks themselves. And that was because we were thinking, we're worried about the fact that we opened 84% of some of these banks. That doesn't seem very new labor. Now, that is the way in which we got stuck in some old orthodoxies. And if we're going to win this election, if we're going to win the next general election, We've got to understand how we need to change. Low pay is another example. We defended flexible labour markets even when it did some, they did some damage to people in terms of their living standards and wages and conditions. I've said before, the immigration issue for me is largely a wages and conditions issue. People were worried about what's happening to their wages and conditions and the impact that Eastern European migration, some of it perception, some of it reality, was having on their wages and conditions. And that is why we need to move on from New Labour, as well as moving on from some of the other parts of New Labour, which I think is very important, some of the factionalism and, and all of that. Patrick. Hi, uh, Patrick Mugabe. Just in view of the fact you've got all this union support, but let's just test you on a couple of points. I mean, uh, for instance, do you think the secondary picketing laws should be changed? Do you think the way trade union uh, balloting procedures are fair at present? And do you think the public sector pensions as currently constructed are sustainable? And those it's are three multiple kind of choice. Uh, so, uh, um, on uh, secondary action, I've got no plans to change our position on uh, secondary action. Uh, on uh, the second question around balloting, 
I've said very sort of publicly throughout the campaign, I think some of the ways in which the courts have interpreted the laws on balloting uh, have actually had a negative impact on solving some of the disputes. So when 200 people got locked out of a polling station in Sheffield at the general election, we didn't cancel the general election. But there were issues around the balloting procedures which ended up voiding the ballots. And I don't think actually that necessarily helped anyone. So I think that is an area that needs to be uh, looked at. And I think that actually would be better for industrial relations, not worse. On the issue about public sector pensions, look, Patrick, let's be honest about this. David Cameron wants to create an enemy within. He wants to say that the real issue in politics is that the public sector is, is the sort of public sector, and that the public sector is somehow a leech or a parasite to the rest of society. I profoundly disagree with David Cameron about that. Take these your public sector pensions. Half of the people in the local government pension scheme, half of the women in the local government pension scheme, get paid less than three thousand pounds a year as pension. The idea that this is somehow a massively gold-plated scheme is not, in my view, uh, correct. And I think the way that David Cameron is going about the reduction of the deficit, as well as um, the depth of the cuts and the, and the sort of speed of the cuts, I think the way he is trying to, if you like, polarise British society is profoundly wrong. Yes? Paul from the Evening Standard. Um, Ed, most of your critique or analysis of what Labour did badly in the last election suggests that they weren't left wing enough. And yet, if that's true, why did the right win the election? I suppose I don't see it all in those terms. So, um, take what I said about tuition fees. I mean, is it left wing to say that we should replace tuition fees and that we think tuition fees are wrong and that we should replace them with the graduate tax? I'm not sure it is necessarily. Uh, I've said, one of, the, one of the other things I've said is the way in which the welfare state doesn't support, doesn't feel like it supports ordinary people who are not the poorest people in our society. I think part of what this party has to do over the next five or ten years, and it's obviously not an issue so easy to do now, is work out how we can resurrect the principle of social insurance in our country. Because I think the problem is if you're on modest earnings, modest to middle earnings uh, in this country, you feel like the social security system, of 65 pounds a week, job seekers allowance, doesn't do anything for you. I'm not sure that's particularly left wing. Uh, the way I put it is that I'm for a politics of the centre ground, but you've got to understand both where the centre ground is, and I think sometimes we got, we, we, we sort of, if you like, got, got that wrong. Uh, you've got to understand where the centre ground is, and you've got to try and define and shape the centre ground, and that's what I'm about in this election. Andy. And you said the, uh, the government lost trust over Iraq, and we should draw a line on it. Did you actually oppose the Iraq war in 2003, and how, in fact, did you draw a line on it? I was against the Iraq war in 2003. Um, I was a special advisor, not, a, uh, not an MP, of course. I, I think the issue on Iraq is not to claim who was right and who was wrong in 2003. I think the issue on Iraq is whether, given everything we know now, we accept it was a mistake. I do say it was a mistake. And whether we learn the right lessons for our foreign policy. What are those lessons? I think, first of all, that the values you have must always shape your alliances, rather than the alliances you have shaping your values. I think part of the reason uh, that Iraq, the Iraq war went ahead with us as part of it was to do with uh, fear about Labour being seen as somehow not part of the Atlantic Alliance. I think we will agree with America on a lot, but we will disagree with them on some things and we should be willing to say it. I think, secondly, you've got to have clear principle when you go to war, that war is always a last resort, uh, that you must build a broad-based alliance if you're going to take part in military intervention. I'm not against liberal intervention, as I indicated. And thirdly, that you must do everything you can to uphold the structures of the UN. So I think it's more, Andy, about learning the right lessons from Iran. Who else? Yeah. How would you describe yourself? Alibi, the new Labour, or reinvented Labour? <laughs> I think the trouble with these labels is that they don't really help. I'm Labour. And actually, I think that that's what people want. And I think... You know, part of the problem about politics is that it becomes a lot about positioning, a lot about slogans, and frankly, that's what makes it so remote from people's lives. And I think the most important thing is just to say what you stand for and to make that clear, and that's what I've been trying to do in this campaign. Anybody else? Um, if I can have a second. Um, 
could you summarise your, your relationship with your brother at the moment at this stage of the campaign? Excellent. You know, I, I don't believe everything you read in the Times, James. Uh, <laughs> sorry to say that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Roland, uh, you know, I think, um, is, it, is it odd to have two brothers in this contest? Of course it is. But I love him very much. I did before this campaign started. I do now, and I will after this campaign ends, whatever happens. And uh, I think, you know, both of us have been around for a bit and remember 1994 and remember 2007. And I think that the lessons of both of those elections are that everyone who wants to stand, is interested in standing, should do so. Um, because I think wider contests are better for political parties. And I think everyone in Britain, whether they're Labour or not, has an interest in the strongest possible Labour party. Thank you very much, everyone.